We're in North Dorset, we're in a six acre lot of land right now and we are going to create a 2.7 acre conservation lake slap bang right in the middle of it. Um, it is something that I personally and the whole team behind us are super passionate about. It's going to be a great project. I think it's going to be something really interesting to put out there and, and let people follow along to see how it goes, how it all works out, the ups, the downs, which I'm sure there's going to be, there's going to be tons of. It's, it's, it's going to be a, not a one-year project, not a, a six-month project. It's going to be a lifetime project, you know. We're going to start with the pond dig. We're going to, next year we'll be planting all the aquatics, the plants, the marginals, the trees coming around the side, creating nice woodland habitat. But going forward, five, 10, 15 years, it, it's going to be an ever, ever of, uh, evolving project. So we're going to keep an eye on it. We're going to keep you guys up to date, follow you along with it. But yeah, super excited. So we decided to uh, build a lake, um, it's a big project for us, uh, for the last few years we've been doing primarily woodland projects uh, with subsequent, the last few projects, real, real focus on biodiversity. We originally started off with uh, Charlotte's Wood Projects, um, that was a wet woodland creation in uh, Somerset. Uh, on that site, there was a very, very small pond. Um, it just uh, a normal average size garden pond, really. Um, from, from that site, we moved over to our Devon site, which was a bit more extensive. You know, we, we were talking about a half acre pond on there, uh, wildlife meadows and um, uh, native woodlands surrounding it. Um, so we've progressively got bigger up the up the chain of uh, wetlands that we're creating uh, and this site obviously going to be a, a big challenge, a, a big step up going over to a three acre lake. You're very excited for it. Um, it's something that I've been dreaming about since I was a boy. Um, I sat on the side of lakes uh, fishing when I was a young lad so I uh, used to doodle, doodle away in my in my fishing journal of dream lakes and how I would make one. So, uh, which I'm sure a lot of people who are watching this uh, have also done are also thinking about. So, yeah, to to be doing that uh, 30 years ago, uh, and now and now getting to the point where uh, I'm actually doing it in real life, it's really exciting. Hopefully it helps people out, especially if you're thinking about uh, doing a lake uh, or a large pond, you know, it help you out. See, it's not a how-to guide of how to uh, build a lake, it's just how how we have built um, our lake. Um, I'm sure there's going to be some mistakes in it. Um, like any project, you know, nothing runs 100% smooth, but uh, there's been a lot of due diligence which has happened over the last few years and, and a build up in size. Uh, of wetlands created, so uh, we're feeling pretty confident that we uh, we're gonna we're gonna do a really good job on it. How this started really uh, was a sketch, uh, just a concept a concept drawing um, of a lake. We acquired a field; it was very wet. Um, the original farmers had stock on it, but um, could only keep the cows on it from around June and had to bring them off it in September. That's how wet the field was. So uh, when we acquired the field, um, we thought about what to do with it. And seeing as it was so wet and low lying, ideally the ideal habitat it wants to be is a pond or a lake. So yeah, that's what we stuck into. So what, what is the lake? Um, the lake is about three acres. Um, it, it's got an island on it. It's going to have gravel bars in it, uh, clay bars, 
deep sections of water, shallow sections of water. Uh, it's going to be surrounded with uh, aquatic marginal plants. Um, going to get reed beds in there, consisting of iris and um, cat's tail and and uh, uh, pendula, Carex pendula, aquatic mints. Yeah, there's there's loads. We're gonna we're gonna blast all that, and we'll put the exact species up online. And I'm sure there's gonna be videos of us planting them when we do it. The trees around the site is going to be a mixture of uh, native woodland, but lots of focus on flowering trees like wild bird cherry, uh, spindle, viburnum opulus. Um, overall, we're looking for, you know, something that looks great. It's an all-inclusive habitat, you know, so we want to favor the bird life. Um, we, we want to get the amphibians in there. Uh, the fish species have got to thrive as well. Uh, the mammals on the on the side, you know. So it, it it's more a complete project, which we don't have the same stipulations as a lot of people have. So uh, we can do things slightly uh, more holistically, um, and maybe what's something which is not quite the industry norm. Then we had to go into planning, of course, this all needs planning permission. Um, so we got a company in uh, to draft up some topographical maps of the area. Uh, that was one of the first jobs that, that really happened. So we got a topographical survey done of the land. Um, wasn't perfectly flat. Uh, it looked relatively flat. Um, but there's actually quite quite a, a bit of slope on the uh, on the land which which posed as which was going to pose as a, f a few problems um, So with the topographical map we got we started to actually map out what was the best location to put the lake into um, We kind of roughly roughly figured out this design which is behind me here um, making of an island uh, some clay bars, gravel bars, uh, some deep sections of water, shallow sections of water, and then pockets of native woodlands around the edges and the back, and then in front of it we were going to get the, the wildflower meadow. From that point, um, really, the next point that we got stuck into was getting an ecological survey done to kind of see what the habitat was, uh, what is there, is there anything of importance there that we need to protect, um, and what, what can we do to enhance it. Um, it's an important part of the planning permission process. As you can see, it's a, it's a pretty thick document. Um, but yeah, as we knew going into it, it was pretty standard agricultural land, so really nothing of interest in there. Uh, spe specifically, no grey crested newts, which would have been a bit of an issue. Um, no dormice, no badgers, um, yeah, no water voles. So it was pretty bog standard agricultural land, um, and that was the uh, the report that kind of confirmed that. Once we had the uh, the mapping done, an actual lake lake design, and an ecological report, we then started reaching out to uh, Natural England and uh, got them to kind of have a look at a biodiversity plan for us. Uh, with lots of back and forth with Natural England, we we devised our biodiversity plan, and and they kind of produce this document here, which is something that they would want to see happening down on the lake. This is a, a report from Natural England said that they didn't have any objections to the project. Uh, we started to kind of liaise with the parish councils then. Uh, we brought it up to the local parish council, explained what we wanted to do to create a kind of uh, a biodiversity project focused around a lake ecosystem. Um, to be fair, the parish council were very, very on board. They, they have climate targets locally and, uh, and it fit their bill. Uh, next was contacting the Dorset Wildlife Trust, uh, explaining what we're doing, uh, showing them all the previous documentation that we have collected and uh, just getting them on board really. 
Then it went to the dreaded planners once we got all that documentation in place. Um, and really, you know, all these things are just a bit of a bit of work and form filling. Um, as long as you're ticking all the right boxes, uh, it should go through. But yeah, the planning team got involved. They assigned it to the natural environment team. They had a look through all our paperwork, made some recommendations on what we could do with the habitats, um, and signed it off. Hi, I'm Dr. Simone Webber from Creative Tomorrow's Forest, and I'm here to tell you a bit about the work that we've been undertaking on our lake project in North Dorset. I'm the Senior Ecologist and Content Manager and um, my role is to provide scientific input and create amazing content about the projects that we undertake. So our lake project, we selected a site that was marginal agricultural ground. It was used for um, a bit of grazing, um, but mostly for hay production. It was regularly ploughed and um, sown with clover and grass for grazing. So not much biodiversity, not much interest for wildlife. This project we're undertaking, um, we're doing it with very much biodiversity uh, as a focal point. So everything we're doing is to try and increase the value of the site for wildlife and really create some amazing habitat here in, in North Dorset. So what is biodiversity and why is it important? Um, biodiversity is a, an umbrella term that we use to describe the, the number of species on a number of different levels within a site. So. If you imagine, for example, a field like, like this one, it's how many different species of grass and the sort of relative abundance of each of those species within the environment. Biodiversity is important for a number of reasons. It provides us with everything we need to live on the planet. So it provides us with food, with the air that we breathe. Um, it allows us to filter water that we can, um, we can then drink. It produces medicines. So biodiversity is essential to our survival as humans. What it's also important for within an ecosystem is to give it stability and productivity. So if you imagine a woodland, a woodland that's high in biodiversity is much more stable, it's much more able to weather climatic changes like those that are triggered by climate change. It's much more able to weather sort of droughts, floods, and it's also more productive. So example of this in marine areas where fishing has been prevented, so the number of and diversity of fish has increased. The, the surrounding areas actually become more productive, so it has a knock-on beneficial effect for productivity. Now, before we started our work on the lake here, we had a, a survey done by an ecologist. So they came and had a look at what is here um, in terms of vegetation, so the hedgerows, the, the field itself. They also dug through the records to see if there are any records of notable or rare species on the site which there weren't. So um, going through the records we can see that there were no records of water voles or reptiles uh, and no records of rare newts within a, within a certain sort of distance. So one of the reasons that we were interested in creating a lake here is there aren't any large water bodies in the area so it will be a really valuable resource for wildlife within the sort of the surrounding area. So we've, we've designed the lake really carefully, um, not, not just sort of one uniform depth all the way across. So it goes down to 18 feet at the deepest point, which will provide great area for fish to shelter at the bottom of the lake. But it goes across into sort of much more shallow areas. So we've got areas that are designed for fish spawning, amphibians, amphibians like frogs and toads prefer much more shallow waters. It'll also be good for dragonflies, all the, all the sort of some of the invertebrates prefer shallower waters. We've also profiled in an island in the middle, so there'll be an island in the middle of the lake that'll provide really good habitat for bird nesting away from any predators. We've designed the planting around the lake um, to, to help wildlife as well. So there'll be aquatic marginal planting, that's things like purple loosestrife, yellow flag iris, reeds, and those will help stabilise the banks of the, the, the lake and also provide great shelter and food resources for pollinators and for small mammals. The overall goals of the project is, you know, it's a biodiversity net gain project after all. So um, we want to make sure that we're getting the biggest bang for our buck with biodiversity uplift on the site. The beauty of that is, is that it's water. So instantly we will have a massive uptick in life, uh, which use the site. 
Um, but going forward, you know, we, we hope to attract some, probably some priority red list species. Um, we'd hope that water voles make, make home, um, you know, we hope that kingfishers get in there uh, and we'd hope we get some kind of newt life going as well, be it great crested or another variant of newts using, using the lake, because obviously the amphibians with the, the frogs as well, so yeah, um, it's going to be a long project, um, it's going to be difficult, uh, but it's going to be very rewarding, so uh, we will see that major uptick uh, as soon as we strip the grass off this field and get some water in there we'll, we'll watch life come to it so and then hopefully we can film all that record it uh, and get that to you so you can follow along as well join us again for our next episode as we dive into the excavation process and the shaping of the lake we'll take you behind the scenes showing you the incredible transformation as we bring this concept to life from the machinery arriving to the meticulous shaping of the lake's contours, you won't want to miss it. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe and comment below. Your likes, comments and subscriptions help us create more valuable content like this and ensure you won't miss out on future videos. Thank you so much for watching and being a part of our community. We'll see you next time.